Hi, this is Nate, and today we are reading Chapter 24, A Very Short History of Russia. In order to understand American history in the 20th century, you need to know some Russian history. Does that sound strange? Well, things were happening in Russia that would decide much that happened in the United States. Partly, it was because we were obsessed with Russia, which means we couldn't get that country out of our minds. Partly, it was because there were real dangers to the world from communist Russia's dictatorship. After World War II, we were determined to be mightier than the Soviet Union. Because of that, we spent vast sums of money on our military forces. We built huge stockpiles of expensive weapons, more than enough to blow up the world. We persecuted some of our own citizens because of fear of communist ideas. Sometimes, we even seemed to lose faith in our way of life, because we mistakenly thought Russia Russian communism was more powerful. Now for that Russian history. In 1917, during World War I, Russia had a revolution. For centuries, Russia had been a feudal society controlled by czars, who were like emperors. The word czar comes from Caesar, which was the title of ancient Rome's great leaders. Many of Russia's czars were selfish tyrants with absolute control over their people. The Russian people wanted something better. They wanted the things that all people want, peace, opportunities, and freedom. Alexander Kerensky led a revolution in 1917. So down here we have a picture. It says, Russian revolutionaries stormed the Winter Palace, a symbol of the Tsar's power and lavish way of life. So moving on, when Vladimir Ilyich Lenin heard that, heard that news in Switzerland, where he had been exiled by the Tsar, he headed home to Russia. Lenin, who was the head of a radical political party called the Bolsheviks, ousted Kerensky in a second revolution a few months after the first. Lenin formed a communist government. It was an experiment. Communism had never been tried in a whole nation before. Lenin had to use force to make it work. He soon created a vicious, unfree, total Italian government. When Lenin died, Joseph Stalin took over. He was worse than Lenin, and worse than any of the Tsars. He killed millions of his own people. Russians who protested were murdered or sent to prison camps in Siberia. Most never came home again. Meanwhile, Stalin and his followers were telling the rest of the world that the Soviet Union was turning into a wonderful, perfect society. So down here we have some other pictures. This first one says, in 1918, Vladimir Lenin established the world's first communist government in Russia. The second one says, a political cartoon depicts a giant Joseph Stalin trampling on Russia and Eastern Europe. And also up here, it says, exile means to banish someone from his or her home or country. Alst means to throw out. So moving on. It was hard for outsiders to find out the truth. There was no free press. The government controlled all the media. Many people believed the experiment was working. Communism, to those who hadn't tried it, seemed like a fine economic plan. Most of the ideas for modern communism came from a 19th century thinker named Karl Marx. Marx wanted to make the world better. He looked at capitalism and saw that without regulation, Wealth soon piled up in a few hands and left many people miserable. There was something even more disturbing. Money power usually led to political power, so the poor had double troubles. They had no money and no political power. Marx said capitalism was doomed, and during the worldwide depression of the 1930s, it seemed as if he was right. So now we have another picture. It says thousands who opposed Stalin were sentenced to hard labor at camps in frigid Siberia. And then we also have something else down here. It says the official name for Lenin's nation was the Union of Soviet, Socialist Republics, or the USSR. The USSR was also known as the Soviet Union, or Soviet Russia, or often just Russia. Russia was the largest of groups of states, or republics. None were free, independent republics. The Union lasted until 1991. Okay, so moving on. Under Marx's economic system, 
people are supposed to work hard and give their products to the government, which is then expected to distribute things fairly to everyone as needed. People don't get paid according to how much they work, but rather according to how much they need. Unfortunately, Karl Marx didn't know a lot about human nature. More people need a reason to work hard. Sorry, most people need a reason to work hard. Russia, China, and several other nations tried communism. There, were, there was neither economic nor political freedom in any of them. Work and pay were decided by the government, and there was no leaving if you didn't like the system. The communist nation were huge police states. Things didn't turn out the way Marx had predicted it. In communist countries, productivity was low and government distribution was not fair. In Russia, the government became terribly inefficient and wasteful. Perhaps communism didn't get a good test, as some said, but mostly, the experts who had hoped for great things from Karl Marx's ideas were disappointed. There was something else that surprised a lot of experts. Capitalism wasn't doomed. If Karl Marx could have risen from his 19th century grave, he would have been astonished to find that in the United States, in the second half of the 20th century, capitalism helped a great many people pursue happiness. Free markets brought cars, washing machines, nice clothes, and TV sets to most Americans. But none of that was clear in 1945. We didn't understand ourselves, and we certainly didn't understand the Soviet Union. Some 40 years after World War II, Russian communism collapsed because the system proved unworkable. But in 1945, some people thought Russia was the hope of the future. Some were terrified of communism without really knowing why. Others feared that communists were about to take over the United States. It was very confusing. So now we have another picture here. Soviet propaganda portrayed the experiment in communist economies as a grand success. In fact, it was a failure. So, that was chapter 24. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it, and um, good luck on any homework or anything.